Hey everybody, today we're going to look through the very first ever Beckett Price Guide. This came out in 1979. Um, check it out, the first page here. First ever edition by Dr. James Beckett. A lot of you know the name Beckett from Beckett Magazine, especially if you grew up as a kid in the 80s or 90s. Uh, buying Beckett Magazine was uh, part of your monthly routine. And you can see right there, 1979. So we're gonna go through this. We're gonna look at some of the prices from 1979 and see how much the hobby has changed in the last well, 40 years. You're gonna see some surprising prices here from 40 years ago. And a lot of us are going to wish that we could get into a time machine and go back to 1979 and invest in baseball cards. What we're gonna do is I'll start with 1979 and go through each set, working our way back to 1952 and look at what the top cards of today were worth back then. Let's start out with 79. Today, the top two cards are right there. Ozzy Smith, rookie card, and Nolan Ryan worth 60 bucks and 20 bucks back in 1979. Let's see what they were worth. Here is the Beckett from 1979. So you can see a lot of the cards in mint condition were only worth three cents. In fact, this is pretty interesting. The most viable card in the entire set in 1979 was worth 15 cents, and it was Pete Rose. The second most viable card was Johnny Bench and Ron Guidry, worth 12 cents a piece in mint condition. The Ozzy Smith rookie card back then, card number 116, it is right over here. It was only worth three cents, and Nolan Ryan was worth 10 cents. How amazing is that? Let's go back to 1978. All right, in 1978, today, the best card is Eddie Murray rookie card. That book's at 80 bucks. You can see it right about there, card number 36. The second best card is the Paul Mulder and Alan Trammell rookie card. It is over here. Where is it at right there? Card number 707. Here's the 78 page from the 1979 um price guide the number one card in the set back then was pete rose it was worth 25 cents you can see it right there that eddie murray was only worth five cents check it out eddie murray card number 36 five cents in mint condition now it's worth 80 bucks the paul malder alan trammell card card number 707 back then you guessed it three cents all right, that takes us to 1977 tops. In 1977, you can find a Bruce Suter rookie card, which books at $15. There it is right there. Also, Andre Dawson rookie card is booking at $20 right there. And the most viable card in the set is a Nolan Ryan, which books at, where is it? There it is, the Nolan Ryan books at $30. So 40 years ago, the top cards in 1977 tops, Johnny Bench was worth a quarter. Also, a Lou Brock was worth 30 cents, and Rod Carew, also 30 cents. Those were the top ones in the set way back in 77. Way back when, Bruce Suter was worth 8 cents. You can see Mike Schmidt also is worth 12 cents. And card number 473, Andre Dawson, rookie card, was valued at 3 cents. It doesn't even say his name. It just says... Rookie Outfielders, three cents in mint condition. Crazy stuff. 1976 is a pretty nice set. Not a lot of high, high value cards, but Dennis Eckersley is leading the pack there with a $30 price tag for today's uh, Beckett. Also, the Hank Aaron card books at $25, number 550. If we move over here to the old Beckett from 1979, if it'll focus. We get our first dollar card that we run into. Hank Aaron, yes, the Hank Aaron, card number 550, way back when, was the first card that we see so far valued at a buck. The Dennis Eckersley, card number 98, was worth, where is it? Right there, it, it was worth 10 cents. Now it takes us to 1975 tops, some really nice ones in 75 tops. George Brett rookie card, Robin Yount rookie card. Again, the Hank Aaron was worth the most. It was worth a dollar way back when, 40 years ago. Today's prices, by the way, George Brett rookie card books at 80. Robin Yount books at 50. There's also Jim Rice and Gary Carter rookie cards in the set. They share their card with other prospects. They're over here. You can see the Jim Rice is 25. Gary Carter is 20, which, by the way, I picked that card up 
today at a flea market. Also, Nolan Ryan, 50 bucks from today. 40 years ago, you can see the George Brett rookie card way back when was worth eight cents right there. Robin Yount, just a few lines above him, eight cents. We flip the page to the Jim Rice. Jim Rice actually holding his own at 20 cents and Gary Carter rookie card, three cents. 1974, this bad boy right here is the best card in the set, valued at $50 right there. And back in the day, 1974 tops, that car, number 456, let me find it for you. Dave Winfield was only worth, you guessed it, 12 cents right there in the middle of your screen. The number one card was Hank Aaron with a buck 50. This was just a couple years after you broke Babe Ruth's all time record. Second best card, Johnny Bench at 60 cents, and also Rod Carew down here at 60 cents. Card number 50. 1973 top you can see the errands worth forty dollars there on your screen this is today's prices goose gossage has a rookie card in here i think it's worth uh 30 bucks yeah right there card number 174 is valued at 30. also mike schmidt is the best card in the set by far worth 150 dollars there's the best card in the set right there mike schmidt 150 dollar card and dwight evans right above him a 20 dollar card you can see that Goose Gossage used to be worth 20 cents, and the Mike Schmidt rookie card was worth 12 measly cents. Unbelievable. I wish I could go back and buy like 100 of that card right now. Now, back in 1979, the 72 set was a pretty in demand set. We see lots of dollars in here, like the Willie Mays was worth two bucks. Um, also, Amazing Action, dollar twenty-five. Harmon Killebrew was worth a buck forty years ago. Frank Robinson was worth a buck. Lou Brock was worth a buck. Pete Rose, dollar twenty-five. Tom Seaver was worth a buck. Johnny Bench, a buck. Over here, we have uh, some dollar cards. Clemente, dollar fifty. Hank Aaron, two bucks. So this set actually seems to have a little bit of value in it um, way back when. Rod Carew, our first $5 card that we've seen so far in this old Beckett. By the way, today in that set, Nolan Ryan books at 100 and Carlton Fisk rookie card over here books at 50 bucks. And way back when, the Fisk used to be worth 40 cents and Nolan Ryan... Nolan Ryan wasn't quite as popular yet. You could see only worth 50 cents in 1979 for his 72 tops card. In 71, we get some pretty high prices in the back. You could see Thurman Munson is $120. Nolan Ryan over here was worth, I think, $150. Roberto Clemente, $150. Willie Mays, $100. There's the Ryan at 150. Also, Dusty Baker was worth 80 bucks. Baker and uh, Don Baylor. Thurman Munson had a little bit of respect uh, in 79. His card was worth 75 cents, well above the common card of 8 cents. You can see Reggie Jackson was 75 cents. Let's see what else we got here. Um, phone doesn't like focusing on the small print that much. You can see the Catfish Hunter was worth 75 cents. William McCovey, 80 cents. We got the Rod Crew at buck twenty-five. Hank Aaron, of course, two fifty, leading the way in the set. And um, actually, Willie Mays, three dollars. Roberto Clemente, two fifty. Yastrzemski, two bucks. And Ernie Banks, two bucks. Were the top cards in the set. And don't forget about Frank Robinson, also two dollars. Get a nice color insert here of a bunch of different cards before we go back to nineteen seventy. All right, in nineteen seventy, you're going to see Thurman Munson rookie cards worth a hundred, which is actually less than his 1971 Topps card. 71 Topps is a really tough set. That's why they're worth more because of those black borders. A lot of uh, cards from 71 Topps have rounded corners and really, really show wear. 1970 Nolan Ryan, you can see right over here, is worth 200 bucks way back when. Also, 1970 will be the featured design for Topps Heritage this year, which should be pretty exciting. Card number 189 was Thurman Munson. It was worth 75 cents way back in 1979. Nolan Ryan gets some respect. 250, not too bad. 1970 tops card, 250. And we're gonna see our first double digit card here in 1970 from the 79 Beckett. It's gonna be Johnny Bench. 
Johnny Bench was worth $15, his 1970 Topps card. That's actually his third year card. Johnny Bench rookie was in 68. We'll get to that card in a minute. All right, 1969 Topps, one of the top cards. I just have to happen to have him sitting here from Fan Mail Friday. I always put um, cards that people send me for my personal collection off the side. This was the best card, Reggie Jackson rookie card. It books today. It's a $300 card, Reggie Jackson, right there. I don't know if you can see it, if it's going to focus. There we go, 300 The best card in the set was Mickey Mantle, the Mick's final year. So over here, you can see it's a $350 card. However, if you find it with white lettering, it's worth $2,000. And don't forget the Nolan Ryan, it's worth $200. And back in 1979, poor old Reg was not getting much respect. You can see right there, right above the uh, top letter. It was worth a buck twenty-five, which I guess isn't too bad. Um, now, obviously, in mint condition, it books at $300. Uh, the best cards in the set back then, Hank Aaron was worth three fifty. Let's see if there's any double-digit cards. Johnny Bench, as you saw, in 70 was a double-digit card. But it doesn't look like there are any from 1969 tops. Nope. Mickey Mantle, by the way, was worth three fifty, and there was no um, variation listing for the white lettering card. And that $200 Nolan Ryan was worth $0.75. Cents. 1968 right here, most famous for two great rookie cards. Nolan Ryan worth 500 bucks in mint condition. There it is with Jerry Kuzman and slightly above him. Johnny Bench rookie card worth $120. Also, don't forget about Mickey Mantle. Everybody loves the mint cards, 350 bucks. Those are the top three cards. I just bought one of those three today at a flea market. Back in 1979, there was a three-way tie for the most valuable card in the set at $4. Willie Mays tied with the Mick, Mickey Mantle right there. Also tied with Hank Aaron, $4. So you might think, how much was Nolan Ryan and Johnny Bench worth? Would you believe you could have had that Nolan Ryan back in 1979 for only $1 right there? And the Johnny Bench card, 247 would have set you back only 250 All right, now we're looking at 1967, which, by the way, has Rod Carew and Tom Seaver rookie card. They come near the end of the set when a lot of the cards were short printed and therefore are worth a bunch more. Like Brooks Robinson, for example, $250. Bucks. Um, that's really expensive. You'll see Tom Seaver books today at $600 and Rod Carew books at $300. So that takes us to our old price guide here. Let's check out the end of the set and find the Seaver and the um, Carew. The Rod Carew is number 569. You can see it's worth five bucks, not too bad. And the also the Tom Seaver was worth five bucks. Best card in the set back then, Brooks Robinson, $50. Um, besides that, nothing really worth that much money in here. Uh, Mario Wills was booked at five bucks. Hank Aaron was four fifty back then. Uh, Mickey Mantle, who's three hundred and fifty dollars in today's Beckett, was worth four fifty. Back in nineteen sixty six, the best rookies were Fergie Jenkins, also Don Sutton, and don't forget about Jim Palmer. Those cards, let me find them for you. Jim Palmer was worth. $100, or should I say is worth $100 right there. Fergie Jenkins is worth $60 right next to him. And Don Sutton's worth $60 in today's Beckett. And, of course, Mickey Mantle is worth the most. $350 again right there. And back then, card number 126, the Jim Palmer rookie card is worth $1.25. And the Fergie Jenkins, card number 254, Fergie Jenkins was only worth $0.50. Cents. And likewise, the Don Sutton, card number 288, $0.50. Cents. Couple five dollar cards here. The Mick was worth five bucks forty years ago. Willie Mays leading the way at six dollars. Everyone loved the Say Hey Kid back in seventy nine, and everyone still loves the Say Hey Kid. And also the Hank Aaron right there was worth five smackaroonies. Nineteen sixty five tops. We've got a couple good rookie cards in here. Steve Carlton's probably the best one. It's worth two hundred dollars. He's somewhere over here. Number 477 also. The Mick was worth 600 Joe Morgan rookie card today is worth 60 bucks according to the Beckett. Also, Tony Perez at 80 bucks, Hall of Famer right there. You would think Tony Perez would get a little more respect. I mean, 1965 was 14 years prior, and his rookie card was only worth 20 cents. 
Um, the Joe Morgan rookie card over here, card number 16, was worth a buck at least. The top uh, overall cards have some $5 cards again. The Mick worth 5 bucks. Where is he at? Right there. Uh, Willie Mays, 5 bucks. Hank Aaron, 5 bucks. Sandy Koufax, I think that's his final card ever, 325. Next up is 1964. The best card today, Mickey Mantle, is a $500 card. And also, Pete Rose is a $250 card. And the great one, Roberto Clemente, over here, is a $200 card. Let's check this old price guide. They're pretty much consistent with the other cards in this era. Mickey Mantle is a $5 card once again. And Willie Mays is a $5 card there. A bunch of cards are worth $250 or so. Hank Aaron, you can see, is a $5 card as well. 1963 tops. A lot of Cincinnati Reds fans are familiar with this set because Pete Rose rookie card is in there worth $1,000. The other notable rookie card, Willie Stargell, is worth 120 Also, Mickey Mantle, got to be on the Mantle watch from here on out. His cards just keep going up and up. $600 for 1963 Thompson Mickey Mantle. And in 1963, you'll see the Mantle is creeping up $6. What do you think the 1952 Thompson Mantle rookie card was worth way back in 1979? Um, we'll find out. Here's all the cards. You can see if we kind of do like a big overview there. Uh, a lot of the cards are starting to uh, inch up a little bit. A common card is worth $0.12 cents for 1963 tops for the low-numbered series. You're going to see some of these cards, like the Roberto Clemente is a $6.50 card, valued a little higher than Mickey Mantle, but it is in a more tougher series, a more scarce series. Hank Aaron was worth $9. I wonder what Hank Aaron rookie card was worth back in 79. We're going to find out in a minute. By the way, the Willie Stargell rookie was worth a buck. 1962, interestingly enough, the Roger Maris card is worth $500. That is mostly because in 1961, Maris hit 61 home runs. So everybody wants the card that shows him hitting 61 home runs. And also on the back, there's a little comic of Maris hitting 61, a little story. The Mickey Mantle card is worth $600 from 1962 tops. And the best rookie card, a Lou Brock, is worth 120 now let's head on back to the 79 prices. 79 prices, you'll see Roger Maris was 350 along with Roberto Clemente, um, Sandy Koufax, Manager's Dream card. I love that card. It has Mickey Mantle and also Willie Mays on it. That was worth three bucks. Warren Spawn was a three dollar card. Stan the Man Musual, a three dollar and fifty cent card. Let's find that Lou Brock rookie card. Should be somewhere in here somewhere. You'll see the Mickey Mantle was a $6 card. Gaylord Perry rookie card is in this set. He's a $2 card. Um, so lots of, um, you know, couple dollar cards. Hank Aaron was worth six bucks back in 79. The Lou Brock rookie card was worth 350. By the way, Whitey Ford, three bucks. And Willie May, six bucks. Now we're at 1961. A couple rookie cards in here. Ron Santos worth 121. Marichal's worth 100. But the Mickey Mantles, there's three of them in here. Uh, his regular issue card is up here, and it's a $600 card. Now, the last 60-some cards in the set are all really scarce. It's the last series. So you'll see his all-star card is worth $500, and most of the common cards were even worth, like, 15 to 30 bucks. And he also had an MVP card in the set, for 75 right there, worth 200 bucks. So lots of Mickey Mantle and 61 tops. How about we check out those old prices? And you'll see for 61 tops, they were on it with those uh, top 60-some cards or so being extremely scarce. You'll see common cards worth 15 cents back then, 90 cents for the high series cards. They were much more rare. Roger Maris is worth $3. And Brooks Robinson, $3 as well. Mantle, once again, coming in at 6 bucks. Willie Mays is 6 bucks. Hank Aaron is worth 6 bucks. Ron Santo, by the way, not getting a lot of respect back then. 75 cents for his rookie card. 1960 tops. Couple good rookies. Carl Yastrzemski coming in at $200. Also, Willie McCovey um, today is worth $120. That might be one to add to my list of cards to uh, pick up now that I got bench out of the way. And the Mickey Mantle card is worth $600 right there. 
And in 1960, the Carl Yastrzemski, not too bad, 350 That puts it up there among the top cards in the set. Of course, Willie Mays, $6. Mickey Mantle, $6. Hank Aaron's probably also $6. Stan the Man, usual, 4 bucks. Let's find that Willie McCovey card. Willie McCovey, 250 which, I mean, is not bad for that era. Um, some of the higher-numbered cards are worth a little bit more also. A Man of All-Stars, 6 bucks, along with Aaron and Mays. Now we're finally hitting the 50s, 1959 tops. All right, here's the listing for 59 tops. Mantle has reached 1000 bucks here, 59 tops for today's prices also. Good rookie card in this set is a Bob Gibson. Um, he is worth $300 in today's value. There's those 79 prices. You can see they're also creeping up, but... Nothing compared to what they're worth today. That thousand dollar mantle is only worth seven dollars. Uh, Willie Mays, seven dollars. So those cards are pretty much tied hand in hand. Mays, Mantle, and Aaron Rawworth, basically the same. Let's see if we can find the rookie card of Bob Gibson. There he is, worth three seventy five. Same as Harmon Killebrew. And here's just a quick look at the other ones. Clemente, four fifty. There's the Aaron for seven. Don Drysdale, 225. Ernie Banks up here, 350. Uh, Al Kaline, three bucks. And that's it, 459. Let's get back to 58. All right, here is today's Beckett for 58 tops. There's no really crazy good rookie cards in there. Roger Maris is one of them. But just taking a look at the prices for uh, these cards for today, you see Koufax is at $250. Uh, the Clemente is at 300 Roger Maris rookie card up there is a $500 card, which is pretty darn good. Mickey Mantle way down here is a $1,000 card. Hank Aaron, by the way, is worth $200. And Willie Mays is worth $300 from 1958 tops. So 58 tops back in 79. The Ted Williams was a $10 card. And that looks like it's going to be the most expensive card in the set, beating out Willie Mays, which is worth nine. And Mickey Mantle jumps slightly ahead of Mays at nine fifty. The Roger Maris rookie card was worth three twenty five right there. You can also see Roberto Clemente was a four fifty dollar card. Let's flip the page and check out the top cards on the next page. Um, we could see Eddie Matthews is worth three fifty. And Brooks Robinson, three fifty. Ernie Banks, four dollars. So these Hall of Famers are sticking uh, right around the uh, three to five dollar range. All right, here's today's prices for fifty seven tops. Love the fifty seven tops design. It's a beautiful design. Mickey Mantle's a twelve hundred dollar card. Also, there's some good rookie cards in here. Frank Robinson, Brooks Robinson, Don Drysdale. Let's go up here. Um, Don Drysdale is worth 250 bucks. There's the Frank Robinson, which is worth 300 And Brooks Robinson over here, where is he, is a $400 card for 1957 top. Back in 79, you'll see Ted Williams was worth $10. And by the way, that Ted Williams today is worth $600. Willie Mays, $11. In today's pricing, that's a $400 card. Hank Aaron, a $12 card back then, so is Mantle going to get beaten out? Nope, he's going to be tied there, $12, so Mantle and Aaron tie for the best ones. Let's find the Robinson rookie cards, Frank Robinson and Brooks Robinson. Frank Robinson, Hall of Famer Frank Robinson, just passed away not too long ago, $4. And Brooks Robinson, who's probably going to be on the next page, whoa, Brooks Robinson, $25. Lots of respect for Brooks Robinson in 1979. I was not expecting it to be that high. So Brooks Robinson, most expensive card in the set in 79, a $25 card. Now we get to 1956 tops. I like these little um, write-ups they put in, in this Beckett Almanac. It talks about how uh, the cards used to come in one penny packs for one card, or you could get um, six cards in a nickel. That would be pretty awesome. I uh, would really love to open up one of those for Throwback Thursday, maybe like a one-card pack or even like a six-card pack. I, I don't even want to speculate as to how much those would cost for a pack, probably at least a 1000 bucks, and you're not guaranteed to get the best cards. Uh, we have a Mickey Mantle card there worth $1,500. Uh, you can also easily see the triple-digit cards, Roberto Clemente, 400 
Hank Aaron is a $350 card. Jackie Robinson, double print, $250. And there's lots of other great cards in this 56 set. You can see the design there of 56 tops with um, Roy Campanella on it. A common card back then was worth 32 cents. Ted Williams, you can see, was nine bucks. Today, that $9 card is worth $500. Let's flip the page and see those top cards. Uh, you can see that Sandy Koufax, it's a $350 card today, I do believe. $750. Roberto Clemente up there, $650. I'm really kind of just starting to focus in on the mantles now because we're starting to move back toward the mantle rookie card. Mickey Mantle, eleven bucks. Willie Mays, ten bucks. Uh, Bob Feller, seven dollars and fifty cents. All right, nineteen fifty-five tops looks pretty similar to nineteen fifty-six. The only difference is the background. You kind of just have a blank background. It's just a color background of fifty-five and fifty-six. You usually had um, some kind of action photo in the back. Um, Ted Williams worth $700. There's some good rookie cards in this one. Sandy Koufax, $1,200. His rookie card also, Roberto Clemente. Would love to get this card someday. It's worth $2,200. Jackie Robinson, you see there, was a $500 card. Or should, should I say, is a $500 card. Hank Aaron, $400. You're not going to see a Mickey Mantle in this set, by the way, because Mickey Mantle had an exclusive contract with Bowman, so he's not in tops in 55 or 54 for that matter so we're not going to see mickey mantle here but we'll see him again come 1953 tops you can see ted williams was worth 1050 hank aaron was an 11 dollar card really interested to check out there's the roberto clemente rookie card it comes near the end of the set it was only worth it's not even going to be in double digits oh there it is 15 dollars now it's worth 2200 dollars willie mays leading the way at two that was not two hundred twenty dollar card for the Willie Mays and Sandy Koufax rookie card today worth well over a thousand in mint condition. Back then, ten bucks brings us to nineteen fifty four. Here are all of today's prices: Al Kaline rookie card seven hundred bucks, Ernie Banks rookie card fifteen hundred dollars, Willie Mays eight hundred. By the way, I also look up the Honus Wagner. Uh, T206 card from 1909, so you can check that one out. Hank Aaron rookie card, $1,800. Kind of interesting that the Roberto Clemente is worth a little more than the Hank Aaron. Uh, not by much. Now let's head on back. Ted Williams, by the way, is worth $800 for 1954. Let's head on back to 1979. In 1979, 54 tops was 25 years old. That would be like going back to 1994 for like perspective for today so really it's not that long ago um but you can see these cards were coming up in value a little bit uh ted williams was worth 14 bucks yogi Berra eight dollars jackie robinson ten dollars Kaline line rookie card was worth eight bucks willie mays 21 dollars ernie banks only 11 dollars and Hank Aaron rookie card, $55. So it'll be interesting to see if any card reaches triple digits or what the first triple digit card will be uh, according to this 1979 price guide. Will we see it in the 1953 set? Let's go find out. All right, here's today's Beckett for 53. We're getting up there in value now. Mickey Mantle, uh, 53 tops is worth $3,000. Also, Satchel Page, $600. My dad actually has that card, but it has a big hole through it. Willie Mays is worth $2,500. Those are the main ones. Let's not forget about Jackie Robinson hiding out over there. Card number one in the set, worth $800. 53 tops. Here it is. You can see back then the whole set was only worth $350. Today, if you have the whole set together in, you know, good condition, $15,000. That $800 Jackie Robinson was worth $15 bucks back in 79. And let's go ahead and check out the other ones. Gonna see, let's see, high value ones. Bob Feller was worth nine. Um, looking for that three thousand uh, dollar Mickey Mantle card. By the way, Satchel Page six hundred dollars today, thirteen dollars back then. Yogi Bear, by the way, nine bucks, and Mickey Mantle worth three thousand dollars today, only thirty two. And I think I glossed over the two thousand five hundred dollar Willie Mays back then. Pretty good, 75 bucks, almost at 100. So no card has broken $100 yet. And we are back to 1952 tops now. It's the debut year of tops. 
Uh, Mickey Mantle rookie cards in that set. Will the Mickey Mantle rookie card be worth more than $100? We're going to find out. His second year card was only worth $32. Bucks. Let's go first and check today's prices of 52 tops. All right, so here it is, 52 tops. This is the card I want to get to give away on my channel. Mickey Mantle rookie card today is worth $30,000. I'm going to try to buy one that's kind of beat up for $10,000. That's why I'm doing my fall the flip. Um, hopefully, I can get it. A PSA authenticated PSA one it usually goes for about ten grand, and I will fly to you and deliver it in person because I am not mailing that card through the mail. Uh, Willie Mays is worth three thousand bucks. Also, a really tough card to get in the set. Andy Pafko, five thousand um, dollars. Super, super expensive. Billy Martin rookie card, five hundred bucks, and Yogi Berra, eight hundred dollars. By the way, the whole set together, 80,000 bucks. So here we go, 1952. We're at the end of the road here. I'm not gonna look up like Bowman and Fleer cards, but I will look up that Honus Wagner. You can see that $80,000 set was worth $4,300 in mint condition. I mean, if you get that in mint condition now, I can tell you it's worth more than $80,000, that whole set. A uh, mint condition like PSA 9, Mickey Mantle, I think there's only one of them. It's probably worth a couple million dollars. So here are all of the prices. That Andy Pafco card, by the way, that's now valued at five thousand, was only worth five bucks back in nineteen seventy nine. So imagine picking up like twenty of those or so. You'd have a hundred thousand dollars worth of Andy Pafco cards that you could have gotten for like a hundred bucks. It's pretty crazy. The Mickey Mantle's at the end of the set, so we're gonna look up that card last. Willie Mays three thousand dollar card today was only worth eighty bucks. Billy Martin rookie card, you saw that one earlier. That's worth six. And the Yogi Bear $800 card is worth $10. So now let's turn the page to Mickey Mantle. By the way, they got all these like little cool ads in here for cards, shops that are probably long since closed. We'll start at the end, you can see Eddie Matthews was worth $160 back then. Bill Dickey, $140. So we have some cards worth over $100. The last series was pretty tough. As you can see, a lot of those cards are worth a lot of money. Um, let's see here. The Mickey Mantle rookie card, it's going to be the last card I show. Card number 311. Today, it's worth $30,000 in decent condition. Mint condition, it's worth at least a million if you get a PSA 9. PSA 10, I don't think one exists. But there it is, 500 bucks back in 79 if you could get one in mint condition. $500. And that was probably before all the counterfeit cards were made, too, back in 79. Um, Jackie Robinson there at 160 But Mickey Mantle, so... I really wish I could go back and buy a bunch of those Mantle cards. Heck, I would even buy a bunch in fair or good condition. Uh, wow, $500 back then. Now let's finish it off by looking up the Honus Wagner T206 card. All right, here it is, the T206-1909 set. This is where the Honus Wagner, the most valuable card in all of baseball card uh, collecting, is from. It tells you right there there's only about 50 to 60 Wagners in existence because they're pulled immediately after um, this set was released because Wagner was extremely against tobacco usage and didn't want his picture um, being used to promote tobacco use. So it says there that Wagner, um, the card is, this price is in good condition, which means pretty beat up. Uh, there it is, $350,000. That card has sold a lot of times in the past for well over a million dollars. $350,000 for that Wagner card. What do you think a Wagner card would have cost back in 1979. We're about to find out. But second most valuable card, Eddie Plank, $60,000. But Honus Wagner, T206. Today is worth $350,000. let us open up the price guide and find out. Here it is, the T206 set. Uh, you can see that the whole set is worth was, was worth $9,000 back then, which, you know, it's still pretty good. Probably not a lot of people were spending $9,000 on sets, I would imagine. Uh, the Eddie Plank card, we're going to see it in here soon, was worth $2,700 in mint condition. Today it's worth, what did I say, $60,000. And the Honus Wagner today, um, worth $350,000 in good beat-up condition. There's only 50 to 60 of it in the entire world. Back then, you could have had the card for $4,800. So it has gone way up in value. If you get a mint Wagner card, you're looking at at least a few million dollars. You could have had it for four thousand eight hundred dollars way back in 1979. So I hope you all liked looking through this price guide. Um, it was pretty cool um, just to go back and kind of relive 
um, card prices from back in the day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, everyone, and like the video and uh, comment down below. Uh, give me your thoughts of the prices and everything or what you thought about the video, things that might have surprised you or stood out. And I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. And lastly, I wanted to thank all 110 of my Patreon patrons, especially my Hall of Fame members right here, Bob and Linda, Tom A., Tommy T., T's Baseball Life has a YouTube channel, Crazy for Cardboard, Big Case, Cards and Collectibles, and iCards also have YouTube channels, and Darren Comfort is at the top of the list.